Hello everyone, bring you a video today looking at a recreation of a sapper of the Royal Engineers out in the Gulf in 1991, just prior to the start of the ground campaign. Thought it was very appropriate, obviously it's the 30th anniversary this year, there's some other bits and pieces coming up to do with the Gulf as well, as you will see, but I thought it would be interesting to have a look at a recreation, it would give the opportunity to talk about some of the kit and the equipment of the time, desert uniform and so forth, and I've chosen a Royal Engineer because it fits with some of the kit I have. And also it's interesting to look at uh, perhaps not infantry for a change. Uh, so hopefully you'll find this interesting. Without further ado, we'll get into the main part of the video and have a look at the kit. So as you can see from an initial view of the recreation here, there is a mix of new and older kit in use. The new desert uniform has been issued, trousers and shirt, and also a cover for the Mark VI combat helmet. Obviously we're going to talk about this in more detail now. And the first thing to consider is the weapon carried, which in this instance is the L1A1 SLR, the self-loading rifle. This has been the standard issue rifle for the British Army for quite some time, but was now well on the way to being replaced by the L85. But many troops in the Gulf, other than infantry, were still carrying the self-loading rifle. Looking at the uniform and equipment in more detail, we'll start at the top as we normally do. And what we have here is the by now standard issue Mark VI ballistic nylon helmet with a desert DPM helmet cover. This follows the pattern of the temperate DPM cover, including the elastic foliage loops. At the neck, a sand coloured schmarg is worn. This is a fairly toned down example. Period photographs do show these worn in quite a different range of colour combinations. The uniform consists of newly issued Desert DPM Tropical Combat Uniform. This essentially follows the pattern of the green Tropical Combat Uniform that issued for use in jungles but it is made of cotton rather than polycotton. And we can see there are actually two different camouflage patterns here. The shirt is made in a fairly standard Desert DPM print. By contrast, the trousers are what is referred to certainly by collectors as a sparse print. You'll notice there's quite a lot larger gap between the patches of the darker tan color on the sand base. This is purely a manufacturing variation. Some companies producing this cloth simply used the patterns from the previous temperate DPM with some of the colours removed, where previously there have been four colours, now there are only two, which means there are large gaps in between the disruptive shapes in the camouflage print. Just a detail to note here that I thought I'd include in the video. Web equipment consists of the 1958 pattern. Many infantrymen had been issued PLCE, the new nylon equipment which was being introduced into the British Army at this time, but Royal Engineers, Royal Artillery, etc tended to still have the 1958 pattern. Indeed, some men who'd received the new rifle, the L85, had not yet received the new equipment, so we're still using 1958 pattern. At the front here, we can see the ammunition pouches. And the left-hand ammunition pouch carries the bayonet for the self-loading rifle, as you can see here. Another detail to note looking at the front of the web equipment is a joint services dressing taped to the left-hand strap on the yoke. This is a very common thing to see in period photographs. Looking to the rear of the equipment, we can see that the cape carrier is carried above the pouches worn at the rear. On top of this, a pair of Mark IV NBC overboots have been attached using a pair of bungee cords. Given Iraq's history, there was a serious concern regarding chemical and biological agents being used against coalition forces in the Gulf, so NBC equipment was both carried and worn. In the cape carrier itself, a Mark IV NBC suit is carried both the smock and trousers, and as you can see, these are still in temperate or green DPM. Desert DPM NBC suits were in production at this point and did make their way to the Gulf, but they were in short supply, and it seems apparent in period photographs that these were issued primarily to frontline infantry. Finishing off the NBC kit, the respirator in its haversack is carried on the left hip, and as was standard for the Gulf, the haversack is carried on its own strap around the waist, meaning that when the rest of the web equipment is removed, the respirator haversack is still carried. Returning to the belt kit, we can see that the rear pouches from the 1958 pattern web equipment have been removed and replaced with a selection of water bottle pouches. And then in the Gulf were issued a second water bottle, so one of these will carry an extra water bottle, the others are used to carry various other items. You'll notice that one is marked with red crosses, suggesting some first aid items are carried in there, and as we move around, we can see that there are in fact five of these in total. This was a very common modification at the time and had been since around the mid 1980s. The final thing to consider here is footwear. And you can see here a pair of Mark I Boots Combat High, something discussed recently in another video in more detail. 
These are laced in a slightly peculiar manner. Uh, this is how I, they came to me, so I've left them that way. I do know that at the time, due to the issues that these caused some soldiers, their Achilles tendon and so forth being too tight around the ankle, different lacing patterns were tried, certainly on an individual basis. So I've left the laces in this slightly unusual lacing pattern that you can see here. These, along with the Mark II version, were the standard British Army combat boot of this time. The well-known issue Desert Boot didn't really appear on the scene until very late in the campaign, and certainly priority seems to have been in issuing these to infantry, and many men saw out their service in the Gulf wearing Boots Combat High. So there we are, as I say, a mix of kit and uniform here. Many men actually went out to the Gulf wearing the, the green tropical uniform, the, the temperate DPM tropical uniform, if you will, and were only issued the desert uniform on arrival in the Gulf. This was very, very common. And certainly by this time period of early 1991, most men had received at least one suit of the desert DPM tropical combat uniform. Not all men would receive a full set of desert DPM, and it's not unusual to see men still wearing elements of temperate DPM, particularly helmet covers and things like this, particularly among second line troops, even after the ground campaign had begun. So it's important to note that this is not the be-all and end-all from that point of view in terms of issue of desert DPM clothing, and also in terms of the kit used as well. Customization of kit was very common at this time period, and certainly men wearing 1958 pattern in the Gulf modified it in various different manners, and period photographs do show a plethora of different ways of doing things. The way it's been recreated here is based on some period photographs, and it's important to note that here, this is just one example amongst many you'll see in period photographs. So there we are, I do hope you found it interesting looking at that. Uh, Gulf War kit is something I have covered in previous videos, but I think it was worth putting together this set of equipment and in uniform and so forth as a recreation, just to give you an idea. Uh, this has been put together from period photographs, from talking to chaps who served out in the Gulf, and basically it's an amalgamation of, of various resources in terms of drawing this together. As is typical for this time period, not everyone did everything the same in terms of the way the webbing and so forth is set up. I did say that in the video as well as I was uh, running through everything, but it's very important to stress that this isn't the be all and end all. There were variations and there was uh, customization of kit was very much a thing at the time. So do bear that in mind. As I say, I do hope you found this interesting. If you have and you'd like to see more from the channel, please do consider subscribing if you haven't already. And whether you're newly subscribing or you've previously subscribed, please do make sure you hit the little bell, the little notification button down below. That will, of course, alert you when I upload future videos. If you really like my uploads and you would like to support the channel, you can. Patreon and PayPal are both linked down below. And as ever, a huge thank you to all of you who support the channel using those two methods. Thank you very much indeed. If you'd like to follow the channel on social media, where, of course, there will be photographs posted of this recreation, Facebook, Instagram and Twitter are all linked down below. If you'd like to get in contact but you don't really use social media, there is, of course, an email address down there as well. But that's everything for this video, so until next time, bye for now.